In today's episode, we're going to be searching this island behind us for puffins. Oh my gosh, I think there's a little group of them. It's one of the best islands for birds in Cornwall, so we might see something else as well. There's just so many on there, they keep like flying out to sea and then just like coming back to it. So let's start our hike to the island. The abundance of wildflowers all along this track is just so mesmerizing. You know, I'm actually really interested in what all of these plants are because they kind of look like chamomile. So, so I think it's time to get the wildlife book out and check out what these are. I was hoping that it was chamomile, but it's actually oxeye daisy. And I'm pretty sure, that, whoa. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these are round-headed dirampian. It's a good thing I've been taking local honey every day, otherwise my allergies would be going crazy. So the couple behind me just said they saw a dolphin. So we could potentially see some dolphins today. So we're currently trying to hike to this end of the cliff so we can get a nice view of the island, but there's a lot of hiking to go. And this is gonna be one of the biggest hikes I've done with all this equipment. Ah, uh, I just saw a peregrine. The one thing I'm starting to despise as a wildlife photographer are these bloody gates. They're so awkward. Uh, you have to maneuver about 10 different ways to get through. There we go. And we're through. My eyes and head are like darting around everywhere. I'm looking at the sea surface for the dolphin, the cliff face for the peregrine. There's just so much to look out for. When I was up doing the intro with the stunning view, someone came up and said there's a load of peregrine falcons all along the cliff. So hopefully we can actually capture it on the big camera today. Look how tropical that cove down there looks. One thing about this hike is there is a lot of inclines and declines, especially with all of this stuff in my bag and on my shoulder, it is starting to take a toll. We should be fine because most of the heavy stuff in my bag is actually food, which I cannot wait to have when we get to our final destination. But we are actually getting pretty close now. I reckon we've got about 20 minutes left and then we'll be there. And it's just such an incredible walk. The sea is also so glassy because it's such a nice day. It's hardly any wind and the sun's just beaming. So I've just come around this corner and I think beside the island there is a load of razor bills, I think that is. There's hundreds of them. So we'll definitely be able to get a nice picture of them when we reach the end of the cliff. One thing I find so mesmerizing is when wind goes on like a really glassy kind of sea, especially when it's turquoise blue. It really does look like someone's painting the sea. So something I found out online was apparently that puffins nest in like rabbit holes in holes on kind of grassy cliff faces, which this island has a whole face which is just a grassy cliff face. So this is the perfect habitat for them to come to. I thought I could hear them. There's a bunch of oyster catchers down there as well. Wow, there's so many birds. Don't these things just remind you of like massive cauliflowers? <laughs> That's so cool. Oh wow, we're so close now. It's literally just around this corner. And we made it. This is where we're gonna be setting up. And just look at the view that we have and we've got it all to ourselves. <sighs> wow, there is so many birds on that tiny island. Whoa, what has he got in his mouth? Oh my gosh! I just saw a raven or a crow with a freaking baby bird in its mouth that it just stole probably from one of the nests. That is brutal. Oh my gosh. So there is no doubt that there is a load of wildlife on this island, but I've already seen a razor bill down here that is still here. And when it dives under the water, because it's so clear and sunny, you can see it under the water as it dives. It looks so cool. And to the right of the island, there's a great group of razor bills that are just floating and chilling. So we can get a really nice shot of them. But every Every now and again I see a tiny white bird fly around the island and I want to know what it is, if it is actually a puffin. But after the long hike with all this heavy equipment, it's time to fuel up on my lunch. 
So I've never actually grown any veg before and I started to grow some potatoes and radishes for the first time. And the other day it was finally time to harvest them and this is the harvest that I got. So I picked them and then washed them and now it is time to actually see what they taste like. That's not bad, fully organic. I haven't used any plant feed to feed them as well. Wow, that's good. Mm. So I'm all fueled up now, but I'm getting a bit cold, so I had to put my jacket on. But I've noticed that the razor bills, when I was getting them on camera, one dived under the water and then all of them just went under. So imagine getting the footage under the water of all of them under, that would be so incredible. But unfortunately, no sign of the puffins. But there is a little skylark on the rock down here. It's a really low tide today, as far as you can see, you can see the tide line, and it's just white, it almost looks like sand, even on the islands in front of me. A razor bill has just come up right in front of me. Wow, you can see a really nice close-up of it now. When they're floating on the top of the water, they always flap their wings and they just look like a penguin. It's so funny. <laughs> but it might be the same as the comrades where they actually... What the heck is this in front of me? Ah, oh, a shag. <laughs> a shag's just come up right in front of me as well. Ah, oh, and there it goes. And there's one flying. Wow, the focus actually locked on really well there. But when I first saw the razor bills flapping their wings, I literally thought it was a penguin. Wow, and there's two, ra I think they're razor bills as well. I am proper locked onto them now. They kind of do like a loop the loop and then go back to the island again. I'm not sure why, maybe they're just kind of scouting the area. But yeah, they do almost look a little bit like puffins. There's also different types of like seagull, like this one down here, if I can find it. Like this one right here is massive. Like these are one of the biggest gulls. And I didn't realize there were so many different types. Oh, the bird book's right behind us, I can tell you. Oh, it's flying off actually. Look at all the different types. There's literally like six different types on this page. And the one just then was a lesser black-backed gull. I feel like this is the equivalent of like a Ibiza island for birds. There's just so many on there. They keep like flying out to sea and then just like coming back to it. Oh my gosh, I think there's a little group of them. Yes. Oh. It's a razor bill. They literally look so like similar, it's crazy. When the razor bills are flapping their wings, I'm wondering if it's the same as with the corvids, if they're actually not even waterproof and they have to like dry them in the sun. Because if you've ever seen like a shag or a corvid like out on the rock with their wings out, they're actually drying it because they're not waterproof. In two weeks, I'm going to New York, which is absolutely crazy. But when I come back to the UK, I'm going to be stopping off in Wales and we can go to see the official Puffin Island. So if you do want to see some puffins, subscribe and that video will be coming really soon.